So hello everybody. Uh, I'm going to show you how to download a crystal structure file from the materials project. Um, so this is a really interesting website and database that was started as part of the materials genome initiative in the US. And the central concept was to take structures of known materials from a wide variety of databases and perform consistent calculations using quantum mechanics or density functional theory to predict the structure and properties. But all of it is freely available. Um, I guess free in terms of you don't have to pay, but of course you have to give a little bit of information to access it. So I'm going to click sign in. Um, so this is materialsproject.org. And I have three ways to sign in. I can use a Google account, I can use a GitHub account, or I can just use my email address. So I think I should be signed into GitHub already. So the middle one should be easy for me. Um, sometimes the website is a little bit slow. Um, today it seems quite good. Um, so it brings me through to this front page, which is a periodic table. And I can just choose the elements that I am interested in. So today I will choose magnesium, aluminium, and oxygen. And so let's see what materials are in the database that contain those three elements. And you can see there's quite a range of materials, so different stoichiometries, different space groups, and different energies. So what they've done here is predict the total energy and therefore the stability of each of those compositions. So by default, all of these structures are ranked by stability. And this E above hull refers to well, which material is sort of the ground state, and then how, how much higher in energy are each of the subsequent materials. So zero is the most stable phase predicted in this database. Um, so it's worth knowing a little bit more advanced, but these types of calculations are really useful. And they're quite predictive, but they are not the absolute truth. So there's many approximations that have been made to make these predictions. So it's not exactly what's going to, what would be measured experimentally, but it's a very useful guide for screening many different compounds. Okay, so the lowest energy phase is MgAl204. That's good. So that material is known as spinel. Um, so it's a material that's very common in the Earth's crust. And here it's, it adopts a face-centered cubic space group. So that's the F. And I'm going to click on that entry. So what do we get? So this is the material magnesium aluminium oxide. This is the ID, the materials project ID. And this would be a DOI, so a permanent link to that entry. So it's giving us an interactive visualization of the unit cell, which is quite cool. Uh, so you could play around, you can turn on and off polyhedra. They even have this really neat feature, so the robo crystallographer, um, which uses machine learning to come up with a summary of the structure. So based on the atomic connectivity, Sometimes it's useful, often it's a little bit too long-winded, um, but in any case, it tells you a little bit about the structure. So it knows that this material adopts this spinel um, prototype structure. That's the space group. You have magnesium 2 plus, oxygen 2 minus, and so forth. So here are the lattice parameters, so A, B, C, alpha, beta, gamma. So in this case, it's a face-centered cubic structure, but that what they're reporting um, here are the dimensions of the primitive unit cell. So it's not the cell at 90 degree angles, it's the cell with the fewest number of lattice points um, inside, the, inside the building block. Um, and these are the associated fractional coordinates of magnesium, of aluminium, and of oxygen inside that structure. Okay, 
They also give you a range of different properties. So they predict the electronic band structure, so valence and conduction band orbitals. Um, you need to cover reciprocal space to really understand these wave vectors. Um, they predict the diffraction pattern, so what it should look like based on the lattice that's formed. Um, and other properties like X-ray absorption spectra, which gives you a signature for the coordination of elements in a crystal. Um, they even predict what would be good substrates. So based on the dimensions and shape of the unit cell, what other known materials would form good interfaces in terms of have good, good lattice matching? Um, in this case, they have elastic properties, dielectric properties, and even some similar structures. So spinel is a very common structure type. Um, so there's many other chemistries that adopt the same structure. And one of the recent additions um, is the automatic extraction of synthesis recipes from the literature. So in this section, you can see reports of how people have made the material. And I think that's it. This relates to the underlying calculations. So there's different sort of generations and flavors of calculations that have been performed. So this is a very fully featured database. Uh, but as I said, oh, moving a bit fast, what we want to access is just the crystal structure file. So that's quite easy, a few places to do it. So this is the crystal graphic information file. We can click here. Um, it gives us a few different options. It gives us the computed structure. So that's the structure, I guess, following optimization from quantum mechanics or you can have the original structure from um, whatever database it came from. So that could be the conventional standard structure. So that in this case would be the cell with 90 degree angles. Or you can have the primitive unit cell, which is the smaller cell with just a single lattice point. Um, or you can have a symmetrized version. So that's just applying all the symmetry elements to get the smallest, the fewest number of atoms possible. Um, yes. So in this case, I will download the conventional because let's keep it simple. So that's downloaded this file here. Whoops. We'll bring it back. Okay. So here, here is where it came from. And then this is the SIF file. Whoops. Is this zip file? So, it's here. so we have some metadata. So this this file has been generated using PyMathGen, which is a Python um, library related to the materials project. We have our ABC. So we can see we have a uh, cell dimensions of 8.2 angstroms, cell angles of 90 degrees. And then you can see you have a large number of magnesium, aluminium, and oxygen atoms inside this cubic unit cell. So this is the full cell representation. Um, and that's all you need. Uh, you can open up that SIF file in a visualizer of your choosing.